And so, um, when you have radicalization here, this expression, the last 20 years, it has a very negative impact. It's something that creates even fear. We think about like fanatism, extremism. That is one aspect we would get. There's an absolutely different way of radicalization we understand too. It's the opposite. I call it, it's like the soft, washed version of the idea of radicalization. What is, uh, from my perspective, even worse. It got like a, a lifestyle idea and we see it here. Uh, the idea of radicalization is today uh, something like for uh, an attitude, something very superficial, where we think even like uh, this guy with his head tattoo, where today, nowadays, we think that's something very radical, and this uh, person wants to express, look, I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, I'm a rebel, and I have no problem with pain, and I'm pierced, and look, uh, what I have everything on me. As example, this word expressed very clearly, oh, uh, I'm aggressive. And these three dots, that is a sign of people who were like, they normally put it on the hand, then they come out of prison. So, but uh, when it looks additionally, a radicalization is not an attitude. It's not something superficial. It's not just like something like makeup. As example, uh, when I look on it, it's pure decoration. And, and he's just playing with that attitude without being. It's just, when I look on his hair, uh, it's an artistic person, and that is uh, nowadays the market goes into that. On the right side, we got again of this misusing of the idea of radicalization, where we have Gucci, it's a luxury brand, and uh, they don't sell just expensive clothes, they sell an image. And since everybody's today bored and nothing is going on, and everybody's walking the mobiles and liking and so on, and uh, they want to give like this radical approach, like everybody's going fighting for ecology or whatever. And when we look twice on it, then we see again, uh, we think it's radical. We've got like uh, things in the background and so on, but they've got flags without messages. That means uh, it's a pure attitude. These guys, he bought uh, this uh, quite decorative uh, boots for 500 Omani real. That means like he's caring more about how he looks. That means he's not uh, doing anything. He has no message. And his message is just uh, go buy, shop. And consumerism is something like the opposite. You waste your money for nonsense. And, and that's our idea of radicalization we have. Like our idea goes to both extreme, like a fanatism, and this uh, soft washed thing, which has no meaning. And uh, here I would like to go what radicalization is. The word radical comes from the word root, Latin, radic or radix. And it means really like the root, that means we go deep in something in it and find the essence of something and, and that's something absolutely different. Wait, I go like here. So that's like, where we have to understand is like, uh, it is something essential, existential, where we dismantle from our thing we have, like going to the core. And that is the aspect which is interesting for me in this radical approach. And in this exhibition, we have two things which are radical, or where I try to find this radical approach is first of all, the exhibition, and second, the item. Let's go first of all to this exhibition, which, where I can welcome you. It's, um, we've got us right now two approaches of exhibiting, and the left one is, let's say, a normal one, and that's one which we were looking for. Um, the exhibition at the Museum for Gestaltung at Zurich, it's about like ideal living 2020, and that's now ours. The left one is, let's go back to the idea of, we picked the idea by uh, Bertolt Brecht, who had the, uh, a theater, it's like an epical theater. And for him it was this theater was very important to remove the emotional aspects. Like, it's not like to catch attention by story or effects or emotion. It is something which wants to go, and not entertaining, it is going back to some purity to some ideas, some abstraction, 
and so we can focus on an idea. As example, when we look at this exhibition on the left side, we get caught immediately by this poster. We think, oh, my grandmother had a similar poster, or she had a chair like that. Oh, the light is beautiful, and I want to sit here. So that means we connect immediately by that, and we are caught by our stories uh, from the reality, from our wishes, our dreams, and whatever. So at the end, that's like a movie, it's an experience. And our exhibition went to a very abstract approach which deleted that. We've got these lines which are expressing, like here, walls and other elements, but they are abstract. That means we have to activate ourselves. Here we get the story, the story is created, and we can just reproduce the given story. Here we have to create our own story. How do we walk? Is that something? Is it a uh, bathroom? Is it a toilet? Is it a door? Is it a cover? So on a way, we are here more working with our imagination, with the voidness of things. It's just that is just like a symbol, like a hint. And that was for me important because now here we can create a connection to this item and find out what does it has to tell us. And here the story is told. So that is one way of radicalization and I'm looking for like forcing us and our imagination. Let's go to the next one. The inspiration comes very clearly too from the movie uh, Dogville of Last Van Tree from 2003 where we have like a, a movie which looks like a theater and that's it. As example, um, we've got similar aspect as example. Uh, our life is not atmospheric like it was before. It is everything is same. It's just like this <clears throat> objectivist approach, not having a focus. It's very egalitarian. It's not like decision what is important, not here the same. It's like the light is, no good, here the light is more focusing on that. But finally, it's like a flat world with limits. It's avoiding uh, idea of the, it's like a little cosmos. And we have here little cosmos too. Our world is like when we thought that the world is flat. We don't have the complexity of connected of rounds like we think. No, our world is limited by these lines. It's a, a holistic approach. That means that is all we have and outside is nothing else. So that means we have to focus on that. It's not like we focus on the mountain behind, we focus on the world, we focus on our iPhone or whatever. Here it's like a limited world and that's it. It's abstract and it doesn't tell stories. And here we've got the same too. It's a very impressive movie of three hours. And the story, we get focused absolutely on story, not on the background. At first, of course, we got caught by that because it's uh, absurd for us. And then we get used, we just focus on what is going on. We don't focus on the light, of the beauty, of the, of the, um, of the scenery and so on. So that means like it is a way of purifying and that's important. Here too, when you come in, there's something very unpopular for exhibitions, you see everything at the first moment. So there is no magic. Everything is very obvious and it's clear. So it's not like you walk left and right, you hide in things. So that was here the approach to not make a scenographic or, or, or a chosen uh, perspective by me. It is neutral. You walk, approach on an item and try to connect. Let's go now, what do I want to express and to connect? What is this essence in these objects I want to show? Um, and, and that's like shows as example some um, it's about the understanding of art generally and about humans. And the question, what humans are? And here we are, uh, 20, 21st century. Design got very much influenced by enlightenment. That means like our focus on thinking and our perception of things is very scientific, logical. And, um, and other things, as example, which we know from the Middle Age, or before, it's like the mythical, mystical things, which we, this has been erased. As example, if we see a piece of design, we think about its function, its logic, how it got produced, uh, what is the price, what is the social context, and so on. That means we are focused on context, story, and facts, like, and what we see. 
and the middle age was in a specific time was like the emotional thing, the idea of uh, the soul aspect and that is something which I'm looking to find back and that brings us a bit closer to, um, to this um, Omani culture too, but I will talk about that too. That means like we as humans, we've got the rational side and we've got this emotional side and since I think the balance is gone, I try to find this suppressed emotional part again. So, and this emotional part comes in from things which are forgotten, instincts, desires, uh, so like libido, joy, intensity, fear, destructive power, that are all today absolutely negative points which we should avoid. But they are a part of us and a part of art. So, let's go to the next one. That is like the little thing which I mentioned on the floor there. It shows a bit like what the essence is. It is like, why always wanting to understand everything, understanding art, understanding design, understanding all, always everything correctly? Where is the intuition, the childlike naivety, the curiosity, the desire to make mistakes, the boldness to ignore conventions, playfully, instinctively, irresponsible, unprofessional, irrational, seeking the animal in ourselves, being a non-conformist. So, and here it starts from um, the aspect where we find what is art, what is design. We see today, nowadays, design and art as objects, as objects of culture, but we started, that is an item uh, which is showed in the National Museum, uh, 2000 uh, before common era, and, and it's an idol, that means like it, it tells us something uh, or it catches our feelings, it is like an abstraction of something, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it, uh, it may be like a bird, it may be a bat, it may be an angel, it may be something, but we want to see something, we created that at that time because it helped us to express our fears, our desires, and, and it's like a symbol of importance. It's like a spiritual thing. At that time, we had more fear and we needed something like a guideline or something like that. And these items are important for us. We try to connect them, that's like a fetish object. Like it is a symbol for help of fertility or whatever. And Nowadays we think we are much more sophisticated and we are not primitive anymore and uh, that is not really true. Um, we really need that approach to these aspects. As example, Walter Benjamin, a German philosopher, said in 1935 that art nowadays still have this cultic and ritual meaning. That means if we see something, we want to see something in it, we want to believe in it, it has to express something in it. When you look on this object, it's not wood or it's a shape. It means something to us and we try to express through that our emotionality, to see like topics of fear, desire, ideas, like everything like that. And that is an aspect where we get touched. We don't understand that object, but we get touched by it. And that is the aspect of us, which is not just like here, the intellectual, it is the aspect where we have this duality of humans, of intellect and the other side, which is like the aspect which gets touched and goes deep in us. And that is something we have forgotten and what is important. And there it comes additionally too, to this idea of um, the Islamic culture, which is on a way didn't have this enlightenment in this way and where this mystical aspect, at least I think so, is still more important. So it still keeps things, keeps the magic. While we think we have to find a scientific answer, we are looking for why is it like that, can we explain it and we describe it and it's scientific, analyze and then we know it. But uh, the Islamic culture loves to keep this mystical aspect in the items. So let's go now to, that's the last approach where you see two, let's say the incense burner from the National Museum. And uh, it, it's not just like a functional thing, which we could say, today we could analyze it, it's for burning, you put the apps in there and then you burn it and it's very fine. But no, it is like, it holds it, there are legs for it, 
we, we, we get touched to that. Even it reminds us for um, putting that thing higher, like because it's important that for us, or it reminds us to an animal, to a pet, which we like. That means like we have several connotations which are irrational, but we create them. And most people who see that, or I hope so, are deeply touched. And here we've got another item which is it's not sophisticated, it's not fascinating. It's from 1959 by Ernst Müller for an exhibition like a garden show. And that's one of the student projects they had, like a prototypes, a small series that have been done later. It's a similar approach. It's not sophisticated. There's nothing special on that shape. It's primitive, but it touches us somehow. It's like economics, we can sit on it, it's the shape, it's very clear, and we don't know why. And, and maybe because we are not, we, are, we don't, we, got, we didn't get taught anymore to, to understand that shapes anymore, because we want to know when has it been uh, done, and what's the age, and what are the material, and so on. Of course, this one has a pragmatic approach. They were like experimenting with this material, um, Ethernet, it's a very joyful material, it was simple to do, you, you make like more the shapes and so on. So it has a technical approach, but it is, the fascination is of making uh, these pieces which are able to touch us. And they are like, on a way, naked, primitive, archaic, simple, reduced, and that's what they have. I would like to go now to the next step because we are in 21st century, and design nowadays has a problem that is a part of a market. It's an industry, and industry has its own logic. They have to sell, it has to be popular for everybody. We are faster, in, on a mobile, in three seconds it has to please. It's about pleasing, and that means like when someone produces something like that, and believes in that, today uh, we cannot go to that. We have, to, we have three seconds. You cannot believe in three seconds. That means like we go to the image, the superficial aspect, and that brings really design in a quite difficult situation. And I would like to show uh, design pieces by the most important or famous designers compared to our items. Our items I would specify still as experimental items, archaic items, primitive items. Someone who does something like these pieces, he believes in that. And it's the same approach like here. He does something, he believes in it. Of course, there's always like an industry behind that. But he wants to express his will, that in what he believes. Let's go now to the examples. Oop. The first one. It's by Ronan and Er van Buholek, a light tower. Very beautiful. And on the right, we've got Hans Eichenberger, Anti. It's on the back side, a fantastic piece. And yes, why pleasing always is my question. And when we see that, 95% will love that. It has all things which we want to have. It's a valuable marble, honed. The surface is magical, like powder. We've got a cable in a, almost in the same color, a bit industrial. It's charming. We've got a button, probably not so seen, in brushed aluminium, so you can, it's on a way in a nice uh, harmony. Then it goes slightly up, like very nicely done, like a pencil. And then we've got this light, which has even with this uh, matte glass a gradient in it. That means like the light to source is here. And we see slightly how it gets dark. So it's so sophisticated and nicely done. And then we've got the opposite topic on it, which we've got like this. Um, glass around it in this fantastic shape and, and with this bit, uh, I don't know, uh, grayish. On the other side, we've got this Hans Eichenberg Arti chair, eight pieces of wood, cheap pine wood. We've got this fixture element. On this seat, you see he was screwing it a bit too much. We see like how he used too much violence. And we've got this light linen which is ha hanging in it. Um, this one is very sophisticated, this is very primitive. This one has, is a part of industry, it wants to please, it wants to get sold, it says, please buy me, and you, we buy it. And next year, it has no character, it means in one year, we replace it, because it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with us. 
it cannot touch us. It's just pleasing. And that's like uh, it cannot connect to our soul and it doesn't have any specific character. It has really this slightly narcissistic beauty aspect. I will continue to the next pix. No will, no depth. Good. It's like here it's still, we've got the same chair. Um, here we've got several issues. As example, it's really a joy to see how, how simple it looks like Lego chair. It, like, it connects us even to our childhood, but you think how simple it is. And, and it shows with how simple gesture we are able to create something fantastic. And, uh, and that it doesn't need something sophisticated. And when you see the next photo, you, uh, we still, most people believe that this is still better than that. And with the next photo, I hope I kill you. Uh, uh, I kill your love for the left piece because we come with Barbie. Barbie is not the Barbie in plastic, it's even like a 3D visualization of Barbie. It is the same thing. It's like it is flat, she doesn't have an expression, it doesn't have depth, it's, everything is mainstream. Her hair is a bit like childish, a bit feminine, she's a bit shyish, it's like uh, the cutish face. It's like jeans is everybody's strength, so it's like something to please. She has no border, or if she would be more dressed for an evening, people would say it's too elegant or too sophisticated. That's a bit like this girlish trick. So that is the same approach. It's just for pleasing the market. And that is uh, when we want to buy it, we don't see it. When it's bought, we see it two years later because then we replace it. So that's tricky, and that is something what I'm happy to avoid and where we have to learn that what we got today is really nonsense. Uh, fear of not being valuable enough. Design is a market. Design, when we sell something of design, that means we sell it for a double price. The same with Gucci and all the brands, Louis Vuitton, it has to be valuable. And that's a benefit and so we go into this trap. And here, it's a beautiful piece of marble. It's expensive, it's one piece to cut that out. That must be 2,000 euro and more. And we've got this fantastic brass, which is glossy. Everybody who sees that thinks that's valuable and people are ready to pay a lot for that. That means that is the reason why we have nowadays design. It's to sell something for a higher price. That's the issue of design nowadays. And here we've got a piece by Le Corbusier. Uh, Le Corbusier, born 1887, died 1965. Uh, we can say he, he was like the most influential, or influential um, architect of the 20th century. And on the peak of his career, he did this extremely primitive chair, stool. It's like a piece of metal, painted simple, and a piece of wood they got. And then we could say he didn't have this ego issue. It was like the time of the peak of his career. And, and he was not afraid that someone could say, is that worth enough? He believes in that, not just him. It doesn't need more. It's a light stool. You will see it there on that side. One of, I think, most magical thing. It's like when we are a child, we've got these simple games and we love them. We don't need like this high-end computer games with buttons. That's like a little, little, I don't know, rope going up and down, and that's it. And, and that is the magic of it. It works with our imagination. Here is no space for imagination. It tells all the stories about the decadency, about where you want to be, and so on. This one is for imagination. So that's a joyful part of that. Here we go to the next one. Afraid of doing any mistake. Jasper Morrison, another iconic designer of, of our time, it is Chair Kali. It's a practical chair. I think it's, I'm sure it's smartly produced. It has, fits to many spaces. The price will be probably fine, appropriate, fitting to the needs of the market. Then we've got on the right side, uh, and it doesn't express anything, what I would say. On the right side, we've got this monster. It's like there on that side too. And Pierre Jeanneret, uh, the cousin of Le Corbusier, arrived in Chandigarh and they got this fantastic huge project of making a capital of a state. And then he started with, he left Europe and there he had this, that is like, uh, they did that in this style, that was tube, that was modern. And, they were, and then he said, okay, we are like in this 
primitive India and let's start experimenting. L let's have a look what this, what everything is possible. First of all, uh, they have simple materials, why not? That is a dismountable chair, why not? Uh, this one is, I think, the only chair in the history of chains. That means this piece, the seat, is hanging. Nobody would do that because uh, we don't have the, that in our tradition. And the rope makes the back so comfortable it fits to any back. It's, uh, that means like it is a comfortable thing. It has to do something with human because you can shake. When you want, don't want to sit always in the same thing, we can shake a bit. And that is like this mantle. It's a big thing of experimenting. Most people think it looks like a machine for torture, but, but, but that happens if you go to the other side. It's like this really no character, no risk, no mistake, no will, no desire, just pleasing the market, something very sad. And we talk about Jasper Morrison, which is one of the iconic designers. Uh, yes, I enjoy to be a bit naughty with them, but we really have to change that. And we don't have to build things like that, but it is important to understand making design means playing, experimenting, going to your own limits and not pleasing the market and its mediocrity. Let's go to the next one, it gets even worse. Uh, Patricia Orpolo, another iconic person, she's uh, now working with uh, Cassina, uh, is de design more than decoration. It looks like a tattoo you put here, and let's go to the right one. Uh, this one again, Gejanere in Chandigarh, working with two, three materials which are not fitting together. It's, it's not about pleasing, it's just really about trying and, and, and going to the essence of material, of sitting. It's a quite comfortable chair because it has ropes, and it is a, a, a fantastic idea because they have bamboo in India. That was for, for Piazzanner a big challenge and joy to have these strong shapes. And still, uh, you normally don't make holes through bamboo. He said, okay, let's go with the metal through. It looks like, in a way, like a camping chair. And, and that is like really this go to your limits. It's, it's try to find, not going to aesthetic. This approach is uh, making something pleasing. It's like, decorating, that could be the chair of Barbie. And, and we talk about Patrizia Orcoli, which is really very famous. I don't want to blame her, but the market wants that. It's fashion. Buy it this year, next year you get something new. And that is a big, big problem because people are not going to the will. Uh, Patrizia Orcoli is a talented person, but uh, they go really to the need of the markets, but it's dangerous. And at the end, we have this superficial design which gets from year and year worse. Let's go to the next one. To, to like uh, another piece is like um, well-behaved. The left one, Bassam Fellow, they do fantastic items. It's really, everything is nice. The wood is beautiful. The joints are fantastic. The leather, it's always the best quality. The piping is so nice. And when we see the piece by Tom Strala Kalahario from 2005, it's on that side. Then we understand here, this one is a part of normality. It's like a construction site thing. It, it has to do something with that. That is like the wannabe desire of everybody wants to live in a hotel. That's like these four and a half star hotels where you th think like, oh, that's comfortable. But it is just our desire to be, to show status or to be a part of the society we are not or we are maybe. So here the right piece is really like playing again and trying to like, it's a metal grid and the, 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 the leather is just hanging in it. So that is really like an issue where we have here like going into quality. Quality as a main reason for good price and touching everybody. When you see something with quality, you buy it. So this one right side, it has no quality in, in materials, it has quality in the mind. Let's go to the last, I think we are soon over by time two. Um, afraid of banality and reality. The left stone is marble, this one is oak from the water, that means that this oak is around 4,000 years old. You can sell that for a very high price. This one gets sold for around 110,000 US dollar. And that is the approach. Uh, 
we, we've got privileged people and they want to show that. And it has this cultic character of you want to impress someone with these strong pieces. We would not blame it if we would not have this table next to it. This one is a table which has a material of a construction site that's like the armory metal coming out and concrete, something what we see everywhere and anywhere. And when we look on it, we start to love concrete and to see it on a different way. And that is something which makes a sensibilization, loving our time and seeing how, how beautiful this banality can be, that everywhere is magic. It's not just like when we use a, a valuable piece of marble and, and this fantastically expensive uh, wood. That means like this thing is again stimulating our imagination to say like, look that we have everywhere beauty too, like when we look on the ceiling, that is when we remove this, it's a beautiful construction about that. So that means like we have to respect and love, the, oh, this one is beautiful there, uh, to, to see the beauty where we live and that's it. Let's go to the, I think, the last one. Two, like, um, sometimes we have, this one is so complicated, then Konstantin Grcic, Miura from 2005, it's a stool, very artificially done. The shape is beautiful, I'm sure, from all sides, it looks very expressive and sculptural with light and so on. You get it in all colors. So it's, it's you get, I'm sure, you get compliments if you have that for being avant-garde. And then we've got on the right side a Leni, a side table done by them 1979, done by six pieces of metal, folded, and uh, 16 screws, and that's it. We can say that's, that's not good enough for me, but it is normal and it pleases to my life. It doesn't want to be this one, which is all, it's so narcissistic, egocentric, and wants so much attention. But, but I, I love this normality where I think like it doesn't, it's not crying for attention and it fits to my life. And, and, and it's, uh, it's not the first moment love, but when you look longer on it, then it gets a good a friend of your life. And here, maybe one of the last, two last ones, uh, a time of nowadays, which is a big problem. Uh, we are influenced of crisis one and the next. We are a bit like crisis addicted from 9-11 to COVID and whatever, and war one to the next. That means like we love crisis. It's a good market. And that has an impact on design too. We are looking for cozy pieces. Cozy furniture is important to give us back the idea of security. Like, uh, if we feel here, we, we uh, read newspaper, we get frightened and we go into this chair or we are afraid of our uh, environment and everything, that means like that is holy heaven. It's like peace, castle, and so on. So that is like a big problem of our society too. This one, absolutely on the back, it's metal and plastic and it's naked. It doesn't give me the security in life, but who, uh, that means like that is for a person with uh, gives the ability to open your horizon. Here you're just doing like that and crying and watching on your mobile to give some likes. So here we've got really this approach of opening the mind, and that's something radicalization of yourself. That means like when you reach to buy something like that, then you know that you are open for this world. And if you buy something like that, what the market right now needs, then we know that uh, why do we need this coziness? What, what do we miss? What, is, what kind of compensation is that item? So um, that is like one aspect which I adore to show to Mario Botta, a very radical architect and, and designer, a piece from 1982. At that time, our mind was much more open, more into experimenting more uh, open for everything. Now we are afraid about Chinese, Islam people, about Russia, about anything we want, COVID and so on. And now the last one. Are simple things not good enough? Campana brother, very, very famous for experimenting with recycling materials and everything more and more. And uh, I picked really quite, uh, impo what here we have is uh, Sophie Teuber-Arp, she is finally the person 
who makes the red line of that exhibition. It's the first piece of our exhibition. It, here it's in original size, it's small for puppets. We made a reproduction big and it was a part of a puppet play. And that was like a time of experimentation, 1918. Uh, First World War was over. Russian Revolution gave a new spirit. It was time for experimenting. And they made like, uh, it doesn't experiment, it's like, let's create a new society. And this approach, they were like this Dada movement. Dada movement was like um, erasing all we had. Let's restart with poetry, with, with aesthetics, with art, everything. And that is at the end, this simple item here, which is a part of the puppet, which, okay, I don't tell too much about it. You will see it, it has a charisma. It's very simple and on a way primitive too. And then we've got this item, which is like, um, I, it is really adapted to, um, I think it's like two years ago it's produced and it's still in production, very limited, so the price can be high. The legs are in bronze, so they can sell it for a high price. The leather is very unique, so they can sell it even for a higher price. And it has something very good. In three seconds, it has a story. In three seconds, you got it. That means like we immediately, everybody will keep it in the mind, and then when you see it the second time, it's so memorable. That's this fast effect, superficial image. It's everything an image. Here too, like it's, it looks like a snake that is like, um, it's a rope, so we think, ah, oh, it's a hunt uh, snake or a dragon, so we've got our story, so we get touched. Everybody, e each uh, journalist can write something like, oh, uh, Campana brother make a new story, it's maybe against the, they're from Brazil, it's maybe like against the killing all animals. So they've got all these stories, and we think, oh yes, we are for ecological movement, oh, we think Brazilian uh, society should not kill all the snails and snakes and whatever. So it's like, we are in the story, and then we think that is something, but that's just pure story. And that's what happens nowadays too. We live just of stories. If I would not make now jokes about that, people say, yeah, finally, if I reflect about that, uh, it's, it's uh, wow, it's unique. And Campana brothers have a fantastic reputation. So that is too like, that I hope when you see all these items here, you start to, to be honest with yourself and to create a connection to that pieces. And that's sadly a time which is past. We are right now in market. So this is the negative end of everything, but <laughs> I hope you can open your soul for these beautiful items here. Thank you so much.